So the final segment of this webinar, we, we're going to have a Q&A. So feel free to type in any of the questions that you have throughout the presentation in the Q&A box. To enter your questions, there's a dedicated Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You can also upvote any questions that you see anyone else raise, just so that you don't have to type it in twice. And we know that there's a couple people with the same questions, so we'll try to get to those um, within the session. We'll try to get to as many as we can throughout the webinar, but uh, if your question doesn't get answered, our contact information will be given at the end of the presentation. So feel free to reach out to us and, and ask any questions that you have. In addition, a link to the recording will be sent out to you in a week or so after the webinar is complete. And a little disclaimer, the information that we're going to provide today is going to be quite generic because we do have a variety of participants that are joining. So it may not be uh, relevant for your specific situation, but we're happy to answer any questions that you have about your specific organization. You can also feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll, we'll chat with you about your, your business. So if we keep moving forward. We'll do a brief introduction of who we are uh, that will be speaking to you today. So I'll start with myself. I'm Caitlin Crowley, and I'm a partner in our Calgary office. I lead our national enterprise transformation practice here at MNP. I primarily work with organizations to align their business strategies and needs uh, to their technology goals. So I look at anything from operating models, operational efficiency, and process improvements to the tools that are required to support your business. And I'll pass it off to Shomo to introduce himself. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, everyone. I'm Shomo Ghosh. I'm a director with uh, MNP uh, uh, out of the Calgary office as well. I lead the digital advisory group uh, here in Calgary. And, uh, uh, you know, we focus on doing organizational te like technology assessment, making uh, recommendations primarily on the digital side, as well as, uh, you know, uh, managing large scale projects and programs and, and things like that. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also uh, the national uh, lead for the CDAP program on uh, on behalf of uh, MNP. So I'm, I'm rolling the uh, CDAP programs uh, nationally, uh, and I do have a team supporting me uh, go from coast to coast on that one. Uh, I have over 20 years of experience in the technology uh, space um, and have worked with uh, you know larger and both large and small um, public and private sector organizations. With that, I'll pass it on to David. Sure. Thanks, Shomo. Hey, everyone. Good to meet you. I'm a uh, senior manager in the enterprise transformation practice in Toronto. Um, I have a background in banking and mostly consulting. So I spent a number of years at TD and Scotiabank um, across really a variety of different divisions, retail banking, operations, wealth and asset management. And my latest role was a director of enterprise strategy at Scotiabank, uh, where I led a part of, part of the internal strategy team, mostly focused on the technology and operations side of things. Um, and prior to that, I spent a number of years at EY, mostly leading, leading large-scale operations, transformations, um, process improvement initiatives, and I have a background in mergers and acquisitions as well. Um, our family is actually business owners ourselves, and we're dog lovers, so we actually have a dog boarding and dehydrated raw business, uh, mostly located in Toronto, Vancouver. So very happy to be part of the webinar today, and I'm looking forward to keeping in touch after as well. Perfect. Thank you. So we'll move on and go through uh, the agenda that we have for this session today. So I'll start with a brief overview of MMP Digital and what we do, just so you have an understanding of what the three of us do. And then we'll jump into the meat of things with Shomo going over the Canadian Digital Adoption Program and how you can get involved. And then we'll finish it off with a couple other transformation strategies and things that you may want to look at as you're looking at your digital strategy. And finally, we'll reserve some time at the end so that we can go through your questions and answer as many as we can. So I'll start with an overview of MNP Digital. Um, at MNP Digital, we have a variety of services that our team provides. We're a full service firm from strategy all the way to implementation and operations. We specialize specifically in the mid-market space from design to analytics, platforms, cybersecurity, and exploring cloud opportunities. We deploy different services to help our clients meet their needs. And then, as we move forward onto what is digital transformation. So when we think about digital transformation, we don't just look at platform implementation, but we focus on what the business goals are trying to achieve and what tools that we need to get there. Whether it's looking at increasing sales, customer experience, employee engagement, or looking at operational efficiency, we take the lens of understanding how we can deliver value aligning the business and technology strategies to achieve the results. 
Oftentimes clients will come to us with a symptom in their organization that they're trying to overcome. And so what we like to do is take a holistic view of both business and technology to ensure that we're not just putting a system in place as a band-aid to an issue, but looking at the other business areas that are needed, um, that need refinement in order to support that desired outcome. And so some of our focus areas from a digital transformation perspective is one integration. So looking at the systems currently in your digital portfolio, as well as any new systems that you're putting in place to reduce redundancy between them, as well as clarity on what systems to use when, as well as integrating business processes to ensure that roles, how people leverage the systems are clear and understood. And then from an operational efficiency perspective, how do we modernize processes and tools that are required so that teams can work faster with less waste and have the right tools to do their job in an efficient way. And then some of the outputs that we look for from that are ultimately improving back office functions as well as enhancing employee experience and the front office of uh, customer experience through better service delivery. So with that, that's just a brief background of what we do at MP Digital. We'll jump into the meat of everything of the Canadian Digital Adoption Program, and I'll pass it off to Shomo to take you through that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Caitlin. Um, so, you know, uh, the different aspects that Caitlin talked about, like the, the value of uh, digital transformation, the different focus areas, uh, the government announced a program, uh, the Canada Digital Adoption Program, or CDAP, and we'll, we'll talk, talk about it uh, today a lot. Uh, you know, that, that program is really meant uh, to help small medium enterprises, uh, you know, uh, leverage grant funding and a loan and whatnot to, to improve those areas, as Caitlin talked about. <clears throat> So uh, let, let's let's go into the, uh, the the mechanics of the program of the of the grant itself. So the grant uh, has, has has kind of two parts to it. Okay, no, uh, David, the previous one. Thanks. Uh, the grant has has two parts to it. Uh, so the first one is a fifteen thousand dollar grant uh, that uh, you know uh, you you an organization will be uh, only be able to use that particular grant uh, to to engage a government approved digital advisor. Uh, to create what the government is calling as the digital adoption plan or more like a digital strategy. So $15,000 that covers 90% of the expense to create this digital strategy. You will not be able to use this $15,000 to do any of the implementation work such as like, you know, buying softwares or, or, or hardware or laptop or, or, or uh, you know, you know uh, pay your employees and whatnot. So the $15,000 grant is only meant uh, to uh, you know, engage a government-approved digital advisor, MNP Digital is one of them, to create a plan or a digital strategy. Okay. Now, once you go through that process and and uh, pre have that plan, then you will be eligible to get up to a hundred thousand dollar of interest-free loan uh, from the Business Development Bank of Canada uh, to implement the initiatives or the activities identified in the plan. Okay. So again, just to summarize, a grant, fifteen thousand dollar grant. To create a plan followed by a hundred thousand dollar of interest-free loan to implement the plan. Now, on the uh, on the loan side of the equation, it's interest-free for five years. Um, but uh, in addition to that five years, you also get one year um, uh, to do the actual implementation work. So, assuming your implementation of the roadmap takes a year, you will get the uh, interest-free uh, loan. For up to six years. Um, when we're talking about the up to a hundred thousand um, uh, dollar loan, just two things you need to keep in mind that if your gross revenue is below five million dollars, then you are eligible for a loan between twenty five thousand and fifty thousand dollars. If it's above five million dollars, then you, you can uh, you know seek the loan amount between twenty five all the way to the hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so that's kind of um, the specifics of the loan. Uh, the on the grant side of the equation, yes, you have to go through a government uh, approved digital advisor. With the loan, you have more flexibility. So you can uh, use the loan to you know, buy software, hardware, or, or do like things such as change management, training, process improvement, and whatnot. Um, and you have the option to kind of use your own internal resources to, to, uh, to do the implementation, hire another consultant, contractor, vendor, or uh, you know you'll have the option to even work with them and be digital to do the implementation work, but the the the, the gist is that you will have way more flexibility uh, with how uh, or with who you are spending the the uh, who you are working with on the implementation side of the program. But with the grant, yeah, you have to 
uh, you know, do the uh, assessment and the evaluation and the strategy work with a government approved uh, advisor uh, only. Okay, uh, now, uh, so, so with that, I'll move on to the next uh, uh, slide, David. Thank you. Um, with, so, uh, you know, uh, how can MNP uh, help me? You know, that's kind of the question we get a lot. So um, one of the key aspects is that, uh, uh, and, and, you know, uh, the uh, as part of the grant application process, it's something that you, uh, as, an, as, a, as an owner or a director of the incorporation, needs to uh, do with uh, with the uh, with the government, and I'll go into the specifics of how the application process works and what to expect and things like that. But it's the application it, process itself is something that you need to do working with the government. Now we are always here to help you. So if you have any questions, any concerns, you're stuck, we can we can definitely uh, help you in in those aspects. We will not just be able to do the application on your behalf. And so that's number that covers like point one and two, which is like doing the assessment and then the grant application support. We can definitely help you with that. And then the business needs assessment, reviewing the solution options, building the strategy and the roadmap is where we as, as a government approved uh, advisor have like approaches and, uh, and, and outlines and, and, and research that we have already done. And we can definitely help you on, on those uh, on those three aspects. And that's really how the projects are being uh, uh, identified and delivered. And we'll go to get into a detail um, of uh, that, uh, the, you know, how we, our, our approach to project delivery as well in a later slide. Next slide, David. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, like, you know, some people, uh, even on the on the grant side with, with the CDAP program in itself, they're like, great, you know what, I, the government is giving me uh, $15,000 dollars which covers 90 percent of the expenses so there's always a 10 percent that will come out of your pocket let's assume that's fifteen hundred dollars so fifteen thousand from the government fifteen hundred from the from from your out-of-pocket expenses the question the question that i keep getting is like well what kind of assessment could we do uh can i is it just meant to kind of look at my website and how do i change my website or is it only focused on how my erps or my financial accounting software is working and and can I use this assessment only to look at, at you know, uh, the financial side or, or, the, uh, or the website or the customer engagement front of your business, right? So the answer is, as long as we're using this $15,000 of the grant to do an assessment, we can look at any areas within your business. So the way we're approaching it is that, you know, either having a, by having a conversation with you, or maybe you, you have already identified like, hey, uh, customer relationship or how I engage with my customer better is an area that uh, that way that where if we invest uh, or use or leverage digital technology, uh, it will help uh, us the most. It will help us grow the most. So you know the CDAP grant can definitely help you with that. So we can focus on areas such as how you're doing your sales, uh, your marketing, and it could include like, uh, you know, uh, uh, including like uh, new digital tools to manage those, or it could also be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, include uh, things such as process automation, less manual data entry and things like that. So we, we have done a lot of projects focusing on how do I make my sales marketing uh, better using digital technology. The next one that we have seen a lot is, uh, is customer relationship management. So, uh, you know, I, I do not have visibility as to who is coming. I would like to track them better, my customers better. I would like to interact with them. I would like to give uh, better experience to them. So all of that aspects is something that the CDAP can cover as well. And then, you know, uh, we have a lot, number of clients who are saying, hey, uh, during COVID, our business model changed. We kind of, uh, you know, uh, started selling online, but it's not mature enough. Uh, we would like to really focus on, on in that a aspect of my business and see how we can leverage e-commerce uh, um, uh, solutions and how we can uh, do kind of, you know, change my business model. How can I link it back to my inventory, my point of sales, my financials and all this kind of aspects. So, um, you know, we can look into customer relationships. We can also look into operations. A lot of the, um, you know, the, the construction company, the renovations, the manufacturing, uh, of, of different, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing organizations. Uh, you know, we're looking at like product development and delivery. So how how to automate that? How to uh, leverage digital technology to make the process more efficient? A lot of the service companies, again, on service delivery, uh, like integrated with like field services. 
um, you know, people, workers going out doing uh, work on the field. I would like to know which projects they are working on, how many hours they have spent there. And I would like to kind of, you know, maybe uh, determine my profitability by, by each project or, or each product line or each location. So, so we're seeing a lot of that quality management, uh, supply chain management, process automation. So, uh, you know, I, I, uh, are, are all at different aspects that you could potentially, uh, you know, evaluate, assess using this particular grant. And back office, another area where, where we are seeing, seeing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, requests coming from clients saying, you know, we have outgrown our ERP system. Uh, you know, our servers uh, is end of life. Uh, I would like to see whether we should buy a new set of servers or can we move to the cloud, what the process will be like. Um, and, uh, you know, on the safety side, for example, uh, you know, integrating the the, the safety reporting uh, process, automating that, making it more uh, real time, and integrating it with the HR system is also something that that we are seeing from a lot of the uh, oil and gas uh, uh, services industry. Now, most of the clients that we are dealing with, uh, or, or we have as part of the uh, as part of the CDAP program, what we have seen, uh, and this is just from our perspective, is that 90, 95 percent of them are in that half a million to the 10, 15 million dollar of the of, of range. Okay, so although these the the range um, of the or the qualification criteria goes from half a million all the way to uh, 100 million dollars, uh, you know, majority of the client that we are working with are in that half a million to 10, 15 million dollar range. Um, uh, in terms of uh, the, some of the larger clients that we have, like, you know, who are maybe in the 70, 80, 90 million dollar uh, range, uh, we, we are working with them and has like a, uh, or have, a, they have like a dedicated IT uh, department. Uh, we are working with them in, in, in cybersecurity, cloud adoption, uh, you know, data management and other aspects, more from the IT technology infrastructure uh, side of the equation. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, I will uh, answer. I'm seeing a lot of the um, uh, questions, so I will uh, get back to the questions towards the end. David, maybe if you can uh, flip to the next slide. Uh, what we'll talk about uh, is the, are the are the steps to to apply for CDAP. Okay, as I mentioned, like I'll I'll, I'll give you a. a good idea as to what to expect as you're as you're um, applying for the program as a follow-up if you have questions or if you're stuck feel free to reach out to us and we'll share all the all that information later on but um, uh, the, the the key thing here to remember is that only an owner or a director of the incorporation can apply for the uh, for the grant okay um, so so that's number one number two is that it's all online uh, should not take you uh, there is no paper form to fill and mail uh, it's all online and should not take uh, 20 more than 20 25 minutes for you to apply for, uh, for the grant uh, uh, the the only uh, you know, the only thing you need to, uh, when you go to the website and you look at it, you, you will see that, you know, there is a, the, the government was asking you to create a GC key or the government of Canada key. It's, uh, it's essentially an email ID password uh, uh, that, that you need to create or maybe you already have uh, to, to as, assess uh, or access uh, any government of Canada services. It's different from your CRA login or the Canada Revenue Agency login, uh, but that's something you need to create then you need to kind of tie your Canada business account or your CRA login to that and apply for the grant, okay? So uh, once you go to the website, you know, select Boost Your Business Technology Grant, uh, click on Apply Now and Sign In, and it will see those uh, uh, the, the signing option as the G as GC key combined with your Canada business account. There is another option, which is called the Partner Bank Login. Some of you may be already aware of it. It's essentially using your banking information, the corporate banking information, to, to log into the, uh, to the same website and go through that process. So there are two options, whichever works for you, feel free to move, move forward with it. Um, if you're stuck or have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We should be able to help you with that. Now, once you log in to the to the website or the or the portal, uh, you will notice that uh, really the only step that will take that 15, 20 minutes of your time uh, is this digital needs assessment questionnaire. So as part of the application process for the CDAP, as part of the CDAP application process, the government um, will ask you around 43 questions, if I remember correctly, uh, 43 questions to assess your digital maturity, like your organization's uh, 
uh, your uh, uh, your organization. So yeah, sorry, I'm just uh, getting a, a notification. So yes, I, what I was uh, when I was referring to uh, the the half a million to ten fifteen million dollar uh, range, it was just giving like a, giving you a sense that we are working with a lot of small medium um, enterprises. But you are eligible if your revenue is between half a million and hundred million dollars and have at least uh, between one and 499 employees, okay? So the eligibility criteria is that, uh, it, it, as long as you're eligible, we are, we, we, we are working with uh, clients uh, uh, irrespective of like how much revenue they have and things like that, okay? Uh, so in terms of the uh, digital needs assessment questionnaire, uh, you will have um, uh, around uh, 43 questions uh, as part of the intake uh, and the, 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 the government wants to, assess your digital maturity in, in eight key uh, uh, business areas. Um, the, the key here is that the, uh, you know, as, you, as you go through all the questions and you fill out the, you know, I would say like, you know, whether you're mature or not mature, whether your rating is one or, or five, all that information is purely from a data collection perspective or, or more as a starting point. So use your judgment, best judgment to kind of answer those questions. The government is not taking this uh, information and, and um, doing uh, uh, any evaluation or any decision based on that. Now, uh, the process will change in the future in the upcoming weeks. So we have um, had a, we kind of received an email just yesterday and, and seems like the government will make that digital needs assessment questionnaire step optional so if that happens then you know you just you, know, you can actually do that step later on uh, with us as well okay once you go through that step right now uh, you know the next step will be to verify your identity using an automated service uh, or uh, you know if for whatever reason the automated service doesn't work for you you will have the option to uh, to uh, uh, you know, ask for a manual validation. And here the verification or the validation is happening to make sure that the owner or the director is applying uh, for the um, uh, for the grant. Uh, and that's kind of uh, what's, um, uh, what the validation that we will be doing. So the manual process is as simple as having a, a Zoom call uh, or, or an, a, a video call, I should say, uh, with the government of Canada team member to say, hey, here I am, I'm the owner, here's my identity, and I'm the one applying for the grant. So, so that's kind of what the verification step is and once you uh, apply for it right now the approval from the government is taking around two weeks so in two weeks you should uh, get the uh, the approval email from the government you sign the grant agreement submit your banking information and you are uh, and then the next step essentially is to formally engage us like through an engagement letter and whatnot um, formally engage MNP digital we will start working with you on the project. It's taking two to three months from our side to complete, uh, do the assessments, make the recommendations and create the final report. Um, and then, you know, we'll give you the final report along with our invoices. You upload it on the same website where you apply for the CEDA grant. And then uh, within a maximum of 30 days, you will you get the $15,000 back from the government, okay? So that's kind of uh, how, how the, the CEDA process will work. And once you have received the grant, that's when the following, uh, the fall, the next step, which is optional again, um, the loan application process, you will see the, the steps to, to apply for the loan and, and things like that. One thing I'll, I'll notice, and I do, do get asked this question a lot, is that uh, there is no obligation for you to uh, take the loan, okay? Uh, there is no obligation for you to implement the roadmap either. So it's not that if you go through the CDAP program, you create the strategy uh, and, and you decide to delay it a little bit, uh, you will have that flexibility. So no one will, um, there's no obligation for you to implement that or to take the loan, okay? Uh, and then I'll move on to the next slide, uh, which talks about how the project is going to work. So essentially, uh, you know, you apply for the grant, uh, you got the eligibility email, how that two to three months uh, working with us as part of the, the project will look for you. So uh, the, uh, you know, before I jump on to the, uh, the journey itself, um, uh, you know, one thing I would like to say is that we, have an outline from the government. So the government said, you know, I the, the final report needs to have these aspects and the sections and things like that. But none of these reports that we are creating are like pre cap reports. They're all specific to your own business context uh, and, and your own needs. And, and uh, essentially we are looking at it more from 
where digital technology can really add value to your business and help it grow. Okay, so that's that's kind of the perspective we are taking. So as we as you once you get the approval, assume that you know you 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 engaged us to 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 start the process of actually building the report. Uh, we start with your business context, so that's important and. We'll get we'll we'll, uh, we'll gather that information through through multiple means things that works uh, uh, in your organization so interviews uh, facilitated sessions surveys questionnaires uh, you know reviewing your your internal documents and whatnot so that's something we will do uh, as part of our our first phase or the first step here um, is to understand your business context and through that process identify a few challenges and opportunities that we are seeing in collaboration with you um, that we are noticing in your organization where a digital technology will be a good fit. Uh, now in discussion, uh, as part of the process, we'll discuss with you and we'll identify around three to four focus areas, okay? The areas that uh, we, uh, you know, collaboratively, we feel that we, uh, technology solution will add a lot of value to your business. Uh, so with those focus areas, then it will move into the future state discussion. So essentially, Again, through workshops, sessions, interviews, we'll identify uh, you know what kind of requirements you have uh, that are unique to your business that you need in the future state enhancements that you would like to do, and that essentially form uh, you know uh, to collect a lot of that information to form the basis of how we will make the recommendation. Now, as part of that conversation, we'll also uh, talk about um, you know what kind of investment um, do appetite do you have because it's 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 important for us not to recommend a technical solution that. That just do not make from an, uh, make any sense from an investment perspective. So we'll have conversation. Uh, those conversation uh, collect the detailed requirements, and that's when uh, with those requirements we'll go off to the marketplace. Um, gather information from the vendor, do our own research. Uh, we have a team, uh, you know, focused on each area, as I was mentioning, like customer engagement, improving operations, back office, or even digital foundations. You know, we'll, we'll do our own research and then we'll come back with uh, recommended solutions. Now, one thing to remember here is that um, we cannot recommend one solution to you uh, as per uh, the government guideline. We have to recommend a minimum of three solutions. So for example, if you're looking to improve, um, you know, how you're managing your your customers and uh, assuming that you know a customer relationship management uh, is one area that you would like to investigate further, we identify that as a focus area. We gather your detailed requirements, and then the rec in the recommendation, we will recommend you with recommend you with three solutions uh, pertaining to that customer relationship management um, aspect of your business. And um, and when we are recommending the solution, it will be based on the requirements that we have gathered and what the product uh, delivers and what kind of how much overlap do they have, right? So we'll say, hey, solution one, you know, is cost you X amount of dollars uh, and will only cover like maybe 40% of your requirements. Solution two, Y a dollar, 60% of your requirement and solution three Z dollars and maybe power delivers you more than, than what we have looked for. So we will, we'll kind of, that's, that's the perspective we'll give for each um, focus area. And then uh, from there, we'll do a, a, a pros, cons, cost benefit analysis and risk analysis uh, and, and uh, move on to the to the timeline and the investment part of the of the journey. So in that uh, in the in timeline and investment, essentially by that time, you will have a good idea of what the focus areas are. The, uh, the top three solution by each focus area, how much investment are we talking about? Again, it will be a range, not a specific number. And then we'll talk about the timeline that works for you, uh, given your organizational capacity, priorities, and whatnot. So we'll work with you to create a timeline that works for you and the overall investment that's needed to implement that uh, that uh, the digital strategy that we have uh, built so far. So that's kind of, uh, you know, where, uh, what you will get at the end of that step three is the digital adoption plan with information starting from your business context to the focus areas, to your requirements, to the recommended solutions, the cost benefit analysis, the timeline and investment, like everything in the story will be told in that, uh, that fashion in the final report, which is the digital adoption plan. Now, uh, the, the, that's kind of where the CDAP program ends, so step three, but we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, perceived like the step, how the step four will unfold for you when you take the uh, the loan, you implement the digital adoption plan, and and essentially as 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 doing going through that process, 
uh, you know, uh, once you have the technology and other aspects in place, essentially resulting uh, in business growth. Now I'll pass it on to David, who will we'll talk about you know, uh, you know, uh, so the the other aspects um, of this uh, transformation uh, uh, that that you need to consider, and not just the, the technology piece. David. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Shomo. I think what we'll do is when we talk about really enterprise transformation, it's kind of a, a broad term, but as, as a business owner, I think really all it is, is just making incremental, sorry, not incremental, but, but transformative steps or minimal, meaningful steps to actually help the business grow and to make improvement areas. So maybe it's helpful and it doesn't matter, you know, according to the CDAT, whether your revenues are at 500,000 versus 10 million, I think. This is more of a general framework and it's going to help just overall organize our thoughts as business owners in terms of making these improvements more deliberately. So I think it's helpful when we talk about transformation to really first kind of align on some of the terminologies. And when I or when the firm thinks of transformation, really it's being deliberate in defining a goal of the business that you're trying to achieve, right? And then making those deliberate efforts to whether, like Shomo said, to align, to improve, to upgrade or to make changes to select or key components of, of, of the business that you're trying to achieve that really brings you to the goal that you're trying to get to. And transformation really, I think in our mind is a, a continuous process. So it's not a one-time thing. It's not a, you know, you engage an advisor for a few months time and you know, th th there's a magical set of recommendations at the end of the role. Unfortunately, it is going to be a work in progress and that is, uh, with the firm and also with the owners and the directors of the firm as well to continuously moving that along. Um, and really, when we think about transformation, it's about thinking about the business holistically, right? And, and it's not just about driving the growth organically or focusing on one area, but having the awareness of the entire operating model of my business and selecting the components that are the most critical to, to drive towards the results that I want. Um, so a couple, I think we've touched on a few of these, but why do we do transformation? Why does an organization or my business does transformation? And, and there's a couple kind of key benefits that really we're seeing as business owners and our clients are trying to drive here. The first one is around capturing market opportunities. And here we're not just purely focused on what are the market trends, what are the, the latest and greatest, and what are some of the areas that we can focus on, but really as a business, preparing ourselves to be ready, whether it's a digital capability, uh, skills, skill sets, processes, um, to really be able to actually capture those opportunities when the time comes. Um, and then evolving meeting customer needs. I, I, I came from a, a wealth and asset management background. One of the things that we always have a primary focus on, especially in recent years, is they say, look, in financial services, whether you're a wealth management firm, a banking sector, you're in the mortgage business or uh, home financing. A, a lot of the expectations from our customers, whether it's how we engage them to the type of products and services we deliver to how we actually keep in touch with them is really influenced by a lot of the experiences that they may have elsewhere. It may be a subconscious comparison to maybe the latest Amazon experience that they have or, or going into Costco. So it, it could be based on influences that are outside of our immediately immediate business operating model or even the sector that we work in. But that, in my mind, I think that stuck with me because that's really a mindset to think about what is our, our customers really need and how do they want to be kept in touch with? How do they want to be engaged? And then therefore, what are some of the capabilities and channels that I could build as a business owner to, to meet those needs? Um, and then again, building capabilities, scope and scale, I think that goes beyond just the digital side of things, but really getting the right people uh, in the right roles and, and making sure that they're fulfilling the duties to the best of their abilities as well, in addition to just the digital and technology side of things. Um, and, and then as Shomo said, it's, it, it's a little bit of, you know, par partnering with the right vendors. And that that's, in my mind here as a business owner, it's kind of, not just necessarily focusing on the areas that you're strategically good at, which is the core side of your business, but really looking at opportunities to say, what are some of the platforms and applications that may really help me streamline? And that kind of goes into the next one too, make help me streamline a significant portion of my business that isn't necessarily directly revenue generating, whether it's a, 
really streamlined CRM process or platform or something in the middle of the road where you're trying to keep in touch with the customers and your logistic, logistic fulfillments. Um, I think there's opportunities there to look at what are the specific partners and processes that you would need and what are the ones that maybe it's best built in-house versus the ones that are best to be procured somewhere else. So I can, whether it's to save costs or to spend strategically with my time and effort in areas that really would benefit my business. So the next one is a little bit of a, a framework, but I think when, when we think about transformation as a, as a small to medium sized business, um, it, it's really going back against kind of the three parts. The first one is definition of your key goals. What exactly are you trying to achieve? And it's not just the specifications of the goals, but rather what are the key benefits we're trying to drive? What are the key target outcomes from a business perspective, but again, from a process and customer perspective as well. And in the middle here, it's really a, a comprehensive set of the, the business operating model in terms of how we view it. Um, there's select components here. You can kind of go clockwise, you know, from customers to service, to channel, to functions, all the way to the back office or back end thing, uh, back end side of things around processes, procedures, digital capabilities. What are some of the, the operating environments that we work in, whether it's a governance structure, um, uh, metrics and KPIs, but it, it's good to have an awareness of the entire ecosystem around the operating model. But when we drive transformation efforts, it's really being deliberate and thinking about a select key components of what I need to do in the round this combination. So it doesn't necessarily need to be the whole set of levers that you need to pull. It's being focused on a few that's really driven by uh, the goals and the business that we're trying to achieve um, and, and really thinking about the steps that we need to take for each one of them. So next one is kind of a little bit of an illustration. So if I think of our business and one of the things that we really tend to think about is how do I find a way to meet my customer needs at the very top? How do I find new ways to engage them not just you know from the storefronts that we have to the, the frequent emails that I send or the or the websites that I have. But what throughout the customer journey, if I map it out from the very beginning, from a person that I onboard to an ongoing service and follow-ups that I provide to them each time they come to the store, to the very end where you know if I have additional service offerings, how do I offer it to them? What are the things that I can do to keep in touch? Um, and that whole journey, what we would do typically is, is recommend to identify keys or kind of moments of truth moments where there's select parts of that journey where the customer or the client values the most. And those are non-negotiable items where if we have a specific capability that caters to those points, that really differentiates our business versus somebody else who may be providing a very similar value proposition. So it's really identifying and thinking about just points along that journey. And then therefore, what are some of the service offerings we can augment what we have and what are some of the service delivery channels? And then on the backhand side, again, is as a business, what are the processes, procedures, policies that make sense according to what I'm trying to achieve versus what are some of the ones that maybe we don't necessarily need and try to trim down against that. And really the digital capability and technology components really drives the strategy and fulfills that. And, and the way that we look at that, it, it, it's always the strategy and your business drives the technologies and the processes that you need. But what we've seen typically is a lot of businesses are really the other way around, right? Is the technology, the digital capabilities and the processes drive ultimately the strategy and it really limits the way that we can expand and think. Um, so that's kind of an illustration really quickly, but that really wraps up this portion of the, the webinar here. Um, Shoma, do we want to move to the, the Q&A part of it? I know we're accumulating quite a bit of questions as well. Yes, indeed, indeed. Yeah, we'll move on to the Q&A part. And what I'm doing here is that I kind of, uh, you know, I'm filtering by uh, the most upvotes. So if you want uh, specific questions to be answered, uh, we have 23, so I think we should be able to get through all of them. I was re giving reply, uh, uh, written responses as well, but that's kind of how, how I, have it, I have it filtered 
on my side. So, so let's uh, take the first one from Kelly. Is this a reimbursement grant? Do you have to pay for the work upfront before receiving it? Now, each digital advisor has different payment terms. So um, our engagement for the most part uh, is, uh, is $16,500. So $1,500 from the 10% from you and then the $15,000 from, uh, from the, um, the government. The way we have structured is that, you know, we, we are only starting, uh, the, we are starting the project with that initial $1,500 and we are uh, uh, giving the final invoice at the end of the project. So uh, theoretically, you can actually, uh, you, once you receive the invoice and the final report, and if you upload it on the same day, you, get, you can actually get the grant from the government and then pay us, okay? Uh, so, uh, so, so we went through that. Uh, so yeah, uh, the $15,000 grant, so this is the one from Cindy. Uh, yes, the $15,000 grant only covers 90% of the um, uh, advising fee. So there is always a 10%. And as I said, it's, it's $1,500 dollars from, uh, from your out-of-pocket expense. How long is the grant available for? A question from Jesse. Uh, if there is no timeline, uh, it's more um, uh, fund driven. So there is a four billion dollar available for this uh, grant, and and when that runs out, um, you know the program ends. That's kind of what we know. Uh, can you provide the actual link to apply? Uh, yes, you're right. So uh, we can, you know, um, uh, we can definitely give share the link with you. Um, uh, with IECD, I can actually type it here so that you can have it all. Okay. So this is the right one. It's, it's it, it will be a government of Canada website. Uh, so yeah, I've got a couple of these questions. What if we have already started a digital transformation and have made um, payments towards it? Uh, so no, it, it, unfortunately, you know, uh, neither the grant nor the loan can be applied retroactively. So for a couple of clients who are kind of in this uh, multi-phase uh, journey of maybe rolling out an ERP system or enterprise resource planning, and they have just completed the first phase, uh, what we're uh, not sure like what to look into uh, phase two or or when to start. Um, uh, so we are we are able to look like the the the. the Phases that they have not completed yet, and and seeing if see if we can do the use their grant funding as well as the loan to get that part um, implemented. Okay, so yeah, but but retroactively you will not be uh, uh, you will not be uh, able to apply uh, the the loan. Okay, uh, does everyone get approved, uh, or why would you be denied approval? So. As long as you um, you know uh, qualify for those four criteria, so for profit business, um, uh, you are incorporate federally or provincially, or be a sole proprietor, have between one and four ninety nine employees, and a revenue of between half a million and hundred million, you will qualify. Um, the so I haven't seen a, any. A corporation who got disqualified even uh, after meeting all the criteria. Sometimes what I have seen is that. You know, uh, they may have some questions and by just looking at the initial uh, information, they will say, yeah, you're not qualified, but they will, uh, you know, if, if you email back to them, you can always challenge the decision. They'll ask for additional document. And as long as you're able to provide those documents, yeah, you, you, you're, um, you should be good to go. Okay. Um, is a business still eligible if they receive the 2400 micro grant? Yes. Um, the micro grant program is very specific. It's uh, it's it's called uh, it's a different program altogether. The 15,000. So there are two programs under the CDAP umbrella. So one is grow your business online, and that's the 2400 dollar micro grant. The other one is um, uh, it's a 15,000 dollar boost your business technology. You should be able to uh, leverage both. Okay. Uh, we have answered this one, okay. Uh, we have answered this one as well. Could you please confirm whether or not not-profit organizations are eligible? No, they are not. Uh, yes, uh, so not-profit organ, not non-profit organizations are not eligible for this uh, grant. This is for for for-profit organizations only. Uh, what's the cost uh, for MNP advisor? As I mentioned, for most of our engagements, it's 16,500. We have had some engagements which are depending on the scope and size of the organization or also the scope and size of the projects. We have had some uh, which is anywhere between like 30 to $70,000. But uh, in, even in those cases, it's the client who has agreed to it. And uh, it's, uh, you know, they are getting the $15,000 back from the, uh, from, the, from the government. Okay, um, we answered this one. Uh, 
I did share the uh, share the link with the for the government. It's just look for the government of Canada CDAP. Uh, do you have advisors for this program in Saskatchewan? Yes, we do. Uh, we have a pretty you know uh, uh, a large team uh, based out of there. Uh, again, part of it's all been managed centrally, but we have a team pretty much in every province uh, across Canada. Okay. Uh, are you guaranteed to receive the 15,000 once approved or are there factors that determine the amount you will receive? So no, the $15,000 is really based on uh, two things, our, our full invoice. So as long as we are invoicing 16,500, we will get the $15,000 back. So that's, that's number one. And the number two is that the report has to be in a format or a template that the government has approved. So, so far we have had no rejections. So, uh, you know, as far as, you know, nothing changed in the future in terms of the, that we are not aware of, we should be good. So yeah, it, 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 it's not a, uh, uh, you know, it, the $15,000, there is no other, um, uh, uh, you know, decisions that are being made. It's purely like, okay, you have the report, it's in the uh, format or the uh, the outline is in the, uh, is it, as per our uh, recommended approach. And here is the invoice, uh, you're, you should be pretty good to go. Um, you mentioned the owner or a director would make the application a few times. Can I apply for the grant as an officer of the business? It's the the uh, the the rule is only an owner or a director can apply. Uh, so so yeah, I am uh, I I can I'll get back to you on that one if uh, if an officer of the business is um, eligible or not. Uh, again, as I said, like just reading out what the what the um, what the instruction says, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the owner or the director. Okay. Okay. Um, what size of fees have you been charging? Uh, no, I, as I mentioned, it's a, for the most part, it's sixteen thousand five hundred. Um, we have a, already have an excellent e-commerce site, CRM and ERP. We are a technology company that wants to create a product offering a cloud service to the, to the end user of our product. Would this program apply? Uh, what criteria does BDC use for the loan? Um, uh, we applied to the BDC for our loan in the past and they rejected us. So yeah, on the BDC loan approval, that's that's really a BDC decision. Uh, we know that, so what we I can tell you for Sure is that once you go through the CDAP uh, program, you will be eligible to apply for the loan. So there is no further um, um, like qualification or criteria between those two. You'll be eligible to apply for the loan. Uh, how much? Uh, you know what the terms? That's kind of uh, more more on the on the uh, uh, on the BDC side. That uh, you can share some information, but again, there is there is no guarantee uh, that we could provide on that. Uh, um, okay. Um, the next one is approximately how many successful CDAP projects has MNP Digital completed so far? Um, and so, uh, and is there a specific industry sector that we uh, that MNP focuses on or has specialty in? So, you know, we are primarily targeting. Um, yeah, so, there is no industry. Uh, um, there are industry specific resources, but not, we are not limiting ourselves to a few industries. You know, we serve you know uh, industries from across uh, different kind of industry across the country, and 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 we are able to provide the services to them as well. Um, in terms of how many we have completed completed thus far, I'll say over over a dozen. Okay, uh, the the MNP is sixteen thousand five hundred. Neither six thousand five hundred or sixty five. It's sixteen thousand five hundred. Kyle. Um, so those two are done. Um, are you aware of any federal or provincial grants that could be coupled with this, which covers software, hardware, etc.? Um, so the the only one. So the the answer is. Um, the, so last I heard from the government, the government, uh, the federal government is working with the provincial government to link uh, the CDAP with some of the provincial funding. I do not have, so that's kind of the thinking behind it, but I do not have um, any of, the, of that information right now. I'll, I'll get back to you later. Okay. Um, so Wayne, uh, regarding your question, the other question, uh, you know, around 
the product development and selling it to um, uh, to 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 your clients. Uh, it's it's it, it is possible, but it it's very situational as well. So essentially, if you're thinking that well, I'll take the loan to build a product to sell to my customer, that's not the intent of the program. But but we can we can talk about it for sure. Can the BDC loan be applied for ERP software or website that is already ordered and in progress? As I mentioned, uh, retroactively, you will not be able to apply uh, the BDC loan if you have a next phase defined or, or maybe new modules to add on to, something that we can look at. Okay, I'll just move on to the next one. Um, is there a program for business under 500,000? uh how do we find it well i'm not aware of any that um that um uh, exists right now um uh, but but yeah if, if if we come across we'll we'll definitely uh, uh be uh, be um, you know be uh, we'll share the information with you from sherry once approved what is the time frame to claim the grant so once approved you have up to nine months uh to to claim the grant and uh yes we are finishing most of these projects within two to three months time frame um, how do you know the ratio or to the cost of the project that we may be approved for the BDC loan? So the BDC loan is really based on uh, the estimates that we are providing. So you can think of it as that the, the CDAP brand or the program, yes, we are creating a digital strategy, but that's, that's that, that plan, the timeline, the tools, the, uh, the why as to those tools makes sense in your, your own business context, the total investment, the range that we are providing, that's the information that BDC is considering to uh, uh, determine how much loan um, uh, you are asking for. So if I give the estimation that, uh, you know, based on what I have seen, based on our recommendation, uh, the implementation will cost between twenty-five and $40,000, BDC will see whether uh, they're willing to give a loan of up to 40,000 to you. So that's kind of how the two are linked. So it, it's not that, uh, uh, you know, so BDC will take this uh, investment uh, the, or, or the report that we're providing, and then we'll take it from there uh, to see, you know, uh, based on your credit history or things like that, how much, how much you can, and then how much, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, how much loan to, to, uh, to provide to you. Uh, so yeah, sixteen thousand five hundred for the consulting plan. Sorry for uh, you know uh, not clearly saying that out. Uh, do we only pay the advisor fee in case we get the grant? The payment structures are separate, Carol Carolina. So uh, you know we, uh, we, in our payment terms, we are not saying that um, uh, you know we will uh, you know that that we uh, uh, will get paid only if we uh, uh, you know get the grant because. The big aspect of getting the grant is you applying for the grant as well. So I've kind of decoupled it a little bit, uh, but uh, again, there is, um, uh, you know, none of our applications have been rejected. Like there is no reason for it to be rejected. It's like a pretty comprehensive 50 plus page document that we have vetted and validated with the government team to say, hey, this is what we're doing. Are you okay with it? They are completely fine with the format, the content, uh, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and I don't see a huge risk there, but the payment terms and the grants, they are separate from a, from, a, from a terms and conditions perspective. Would the cannabis industry be a good candidate? Yes, uh, they'll be a great candidate. I have, I have at least three or four projects right now um, with the cannabis industry. One thing that you may hear is that the PDC in the past would not provide loan to the cannabis industry and i did uh, uh get that confirmation from from bdc that um uh, for the cdap program they have made that as an exception okay and the, our franchises eligible uh, such as a four dealer dealership so there is a, like if you are um so uh, the answer, it, it depends. So if you're just a franchise and if you're getting everything uh, being delivered by, uh, by your central organization or corporation, it could be tricky. But if it's a separate organ, you know, incorporation running a dealership uh, and have some needs and, uh, you know, and on a case by case basis, we're able to get um, approval for those. Okay, I answered the cannabis industry. We have four more minutes, uh, so maybe um, I'll just uh, reiterate like what, oh, we actually, uh, what was the interest-free loan ranges based on? Okay, so yeah, it's up. So 
Below five million gives you a maximum of fifty thousand dollars. Beyond five, if your revenue is above five million, that's when you can um, get the uh, get the hundred thousand uh, dollar dollar loan. Okay. Um, so, do you know if BDC provides finance for the entire implementation cost? Yes, it will. It, we will when we create the plan, we will put the entire implementation cost there, which will include not just the cost of buying the technology, but everything that you need to implement the technology. And BDC will base their loan amount based on based on the amount that we are putting forward. Okay. So, uh, Caitlin, I'm thinking like you know, maybe given that we have three more minutes, uh, we what we can do is like take the rest of the questions and get back to uh, Dave at a later time. Yep, that works. <clears throat> so I just want to thank everyone for joining. Appreciate you engaging in this. And if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. As we mentioned, um, there will be the presentation will be sent out in the next week or so. Um, and we'll try to answer any of the outstanding questions that we were unable to answer. Um, if you have anything else that you want to talk through, you can always feel free to reach out and we're happy to chat at any time. And uh, before we end, you know, we just have one full question for you. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is just the, to see, like, you know, based on the information we provided to you today, uh, you know, what, what, what your, uh, you know, thoughts are. So just, that's just, just so that we have a little bit of an understanding as to, as to where, where you are, uh, what some of the next possible next steps could be. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, and uh, we look forward to, to speaking with you in the future. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.